Something I want to tell you, when you say universe created itself, is a nonsensical statement because why? If a universe were non-existent, therefore it needs something else to bring it into existence. If I don't exist, I cannot create myself, I don't exist at all. So I need something else to bring me into existence. And that thing cannot be an object like a camera or something else. Just looking at myself, you know, the structure of myself, we have a nose next to our mouth before we eat, smell food. We have eyebrows above our eyes. Why? Because the sweat contains the salt. So I can see there's a wisdom, there's a knowledge, there is a power. So this attribute that doesn't exist by itself, exists in someone, you understand? That's why in the Islamic teaching, Allah mentioned that in the Quran, were they created by nothing or did they create themselves? Meaning it's impossible, illogical, that this universe was created by nothing or create, you create yourself. Doesn't make any sense. Well, I just can't personally believe in someone that I'm not 100% sure he even exists because there's, I've never seen him, I've never met him, you know, and it's kind of hard to believe something. Have you met, have you met your great, great grandfather? Your great, great, great grandfather. No, 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 your great, great grandfather. Maybe like 400 years ago he was alive. You haven't met him, okay? So this argument of you have to meet him is not, is not conditional to know something exists with certainty. Yeah, but I know he's in my family. How do you know? Because... Because of the lineage? Yeah. yeah, the lineage. Likewise, because of this creation. When you reflect upon it, it's impossible. Huh? Word of mouth. Huh? A word of mouth. It's a word of mouth come to you yeah, about your grandfather. But the point here is... That when you look at our, that's why believing in God firstly is something which is well rooted in, within us. But sometimes because you're born in environments that can say, uh, divert you away from accepting there is God, then we can use sound reasoning. For example, like I said to you, let me make it clear to you, you know. I'm sorry for taking your time. Don't feel pressured, don't worry, you know. If you want me to stop, I can stop. Have you seen the person who made the phone? We haven't seen it, okay? Hello, uh, Habibia. Uh, I don't have, I don't, we don't have to see the person who made the phone to know the person who made it must have knowledge, must have ability, must have wisdom, type of wisdom. Because why? By looking at the phone, I see the structure, you know, there's a menu, there's a camera, all that organized, yeah? So what I have to do, just utilizing my sound reasoning, I can come to conclusion, the person who made the phone must have knowledge, power and ability. However, I will never be able to know what is the shoe size because that is beyond my knowledge, beyond the capacity. So this phone is on a smaller scale. What about you and I? What about this universe when we, when we, when we see everything is connected? Everything is organized. Today is Sunday. Tomorrow is Monday. How do we know that? By the sun setting, sun rising. That's why in the Quranic teaching, Allah always tell us to look and reflect upon Allah's creation. Because when you reflect and you, feel the, you see the order and the perfection, likewise, even on ourselves, Allah mentioned in the Quran, that we are a clear sign, clear proofs for Allah's existence. You understand? So also, so this is called universal proof. Also, we have something called Islamic proof, which is the Quranic teaching and the Prophet Muhammad teaching. That it makes it more stronger why there is God, who is Allah, and the Islam is the truth. Not because I had a dream, it's called personal experience. Because I can break, in, break it down for you and show you why Islam is the truth and why Islam strengthen our belief, will give us more certainty that there is a creator who is Allah and should be worshipped. I believe in the creator, yeah, I believe in Allah, yeah, God, yeah. Yeah, because when you don't believe in God, it's a big problem. Yeah, but I feel like people just choose to believe, just so they don't know. That's what people... You drop your coffee. Yeah, yeah. No, no the, that's one of the uh, Richard Dawkins statements. He tried to say the reason people believe in God because they are getting scared of the environment or the, the nature. That is incorrect because Prophet Muhammad told us, which I'm going to give you outside proof, but Prophet Muhammad told us that every child is born to believe in the Creator, which is called Fitra. There was a study carried out in Oxford University, like you would do a project, yeah, for school. So there was, a, 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 I can't remember their names now, but you can check it. They done projects, took them three years, and they spent 1.9 million on this project. They took children from different parts of the world. Children even from background, the atheist background. They came to a conclusion, if you leave children 
without any prior education, they will grow up believing there's a creator and there's a purpose in life. So that, that rebuke and debunk the statement, God, the reason people believe in God because they're scared. That is not true. Believing in God is something which is common sense. It goes in line with our sound reasoning. Yeah, but it's human nature to feed the unknown. To? It's human nature to feed the unknown. To feed unknown. The unknown. Uh, the fe unknown. Yeah, but I'm not saying that you cannot fear God. I mean, we worship Allah based upon fear and love because we fear that we know is almighty, you know? But I'm not, say I'm not talking about fearing unknown or not. But what I'm saying to you, there's universal proofs and the legislative proof there is a creator. My question to you, if I say to you, imagine you, you found an iPhone in the middle of nowhere, and I say to you that phone was made by randomness, would you accept that? Be, be honest. No, it's so organized and programmed. What about this beautiful creation? What about your own creation? That's what Allah said, look, but you know what? You know, people keep asking, show me miracle. Yeah, your own eyes is a miracle. You want to ask for a miracle, but your own eyes is a miracle. Our eyes more complicated, more programmed, more organized, more connected, more sophisticated than a camera. That cannot come from randomness or by chance or blind, blind matter. It's impossible, illogical, irrational. So my question to you as a smart young girl coming to the project here, which one is make sense? This universe was created by a creator who possesses absolute power, absolute knowledge, absolute wisdom, or by nothing. I mean, Big Bang Theory, you talk about unknown. Big Bang Theory is from the unknown, from the unseen, from the past. I mean, Big Bang Theory, some Muslims try to use it to prove because a Big Bang is a, is a reaction. Yeah. So who caused it? But I don't even believe in it. I don't believe in Big Bang. Yeah, but everything is made out of science. So, so it's not Everything is made of what? Science. Science is, so science is a topic, a subject. How is it made of science? Like cells and everything like that. So connected to science. No, science is... Uh, like just, even us. Just no, uh, yeah, science... No, no, science is to study something. Science doesn't make something. I'm just talking about science in general. Like, I'm not, I don't have like that type of knowledge. I'm just no, you know why I'm, I'm you know why I'm speaking to you? Because you know what's happening? You are repeating something you had in school. Because it's, it doesn't make any sense. You know what you're telling me? It's like I'm asking you, who made the phone? You tell me maths. Math, math is not an entity that possesses power. You understand what I'm saying? Science is what? Science is a topic, subject, is, a, is, a, is a, uh, something that we, we study. Like to study about universe, it's called science. There's cos uh, uh, cosmology, biology, sociology, and so on. It's called science. Science is not create. We create science to study and, and understand. Not science create us. Science is a topic. It's not entity. Like, if I, imagine I said to you, the, 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 what do you call it? Who made the car? Uh, science of biology. That's, that's a topic you study in schools. Okay, what should I say by that? Who oh, engineering. Yeah, who made the car engineering? So what should I say? Because I don't want to put words in your mouth. Why well, you feel pressure? No problem, I'll let you go, inshallah. But what I would advise you to study, our, we have our channel on YouTube. You can check it out. It's called Das Dawa, if you want to look at it. Then, because uh, you said you came here to, when you want to choose your own path. Yeah, it's just... That's what you Oh, it's not in reality, it's just... Uh, no, 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 for the project. Oh, just in theory. I get to choose my own path. Uh, okay, so what do you mean by that? You're choosing your own path in what way? If you don't mind asking. You have freedom to do anything you want with it, you know? Yeah. Like, I can choose to think about prison systems or like, uh, sci like sociology or human rights and stuff. That's what I'm focusing on, human rights. Uh, okay, so you took a... freedom of speech to say yeah. anything you want. No, we don't have freedom of speech, absolutely. There's no this absolute... This is basically freedom of speech. No, there's no absolute freedom of speech. If I stand here and I will say things, I can get arrested. There's no absolute freedom of speech. There's not, you sister. Can, uh, but technically, yeah. you can still say anything you want. No, I can't say. Yeah, of course. Like one, one of the prisoners of Africa said, he said, I will guarantee you freedom of speech, but I will not guarantee you freedom after speech. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah there'll be consequences. Yeah, which is a paradox. Because if I have freedom of speech, why are you gonna, why not guarantee me freedom after speech? You get repercussions out. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Because why, if we have, we don't have absolute human rights, and it, like you talk about human rights, who should dictate what is human right or is not? Well, government, I guess. No. Government? Yeah. So if the government said from you human right to not speak, would that be a right? I mean, yeah. But you just say the, the, the government dictates. They have power over us. They make the rules. 
No, but I'm saying it doesn't mean because the government dictates something to us, we have to follow them. That's what I call sheep mentality. You know? And that's what Islam comes with, that warning and gets sheep mentality. That Allah said, bring you proofs. We don't just blind follow because of government. The reason I mentioned that, I'm not sure if you're aware with what happened with Qatar, in Qatar, about LGBTQ. In Muslim countries, we don't accept LGBTQ, okay? And they try to say that's from the human rights. But what about our human rights? If we say from our human rights to not accept LGBTQ, the LGBTQ, they say from the human rights to accept them. So which human rights should we follow? You see the contradiction? That's why, which human rights should we follow? <laughs> that's why we need the creator. When the creator gives us a right, it's absolute. But human beings, remember we have bias, we have evil desires, you know? Remember that. We have bias and we have evil desires. Like I said to one guy, I said, if I said to you, look, I feel I'm armless, I have no arm, I feel like it. Literally, I feel I was born armless. Even though clearly you see I have an arm, would you help me to cut off my arm if I said you help me? No. So what about people who are saying they feel they're completely, they are a man, but they feel like a woman, and we go and pay money from the taxes money, people are working hard, and go change everything they've been, the way they created, because they feel something else. That's what Allah in the Quran said. If the, the truth, absolute truth, follow people's desires, the heavens and the earth be corrupted. And we can observe that right now. You know, you know, we can see that when we start following our desires, there's a man that raped two women. Have you heard about it? There's a man, have you heard about yeah, it? Yeah? He killed himself, no, 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 he raped two women. Oh, no. He was going to the courts. When he was going to the courts for his sentence, he knew that they're going to put him in prison. So what he did, he identified himself as a woman. And now by law, you have to, if you don't accept him, you're a bigot. You have to put him in a woman in prison. For him is what? It's paradise, it's not prison. <laughs> yeah, that's what he's looking for. Yeah. You see, you see the dangerous his sister, you see a smart girl, you know, coming here, by, are you by yourself? Come in here to study and do projects. I, I, I rate you for that. But also I will tell you to learn about Islam and understand Islam. You know, Islam came with five things. And these five things, if we preserve them, we will have a good society, healthy society. First one, Islam came to preserve religion. What does that mean? It means in Islam, if you start worshiping a false god, that including our desires, then we'll have corruption. And I will demonstrate to you that. But when you worship the true god, Islam tells you to protect your intellect. That's why in Islam, alcohol and drugs is forbidden. Thirdly, Islam came to preserve wealth. That's why in Islam, interest and gambling is forbidden. Fourthly, Islam came to preserve marriage and families. That's why adultery and fornication is forbidden. Lastly, Islam came to preserve life. That's why, that's why harming yourself, killing yourself, killing innocent people, committing suicide is forbidden. These five things that Islam came to preserve, if we preserve them, we will have a good society. Alcohol destroy us individually and collectively. You agree? Gambling, likewise. Gambling. Yes. And what he does to you, literally, I know stories. Not one, not ten, over 50 stories. When you hear people, they start becoming addicted to gambling. They go steal from their children. They steal, they steal PlayStation 2 to go sell it. Or PlayStation 5, I'm, I'm back, you know, steal PlayStation 2. PlayStation 5 and sell it just to gamble. So gambling, you make likewise. What they call it? Interest. Interest is, is new slavery. Interest makes the rich richer, poor poorer. Likewise, fornication, adultery destroys societies. They have, they have children, they, have, they don't know their parents and so on. And I grew up, parents, children generally speaking, who they don't know their parents and so on, they grew up mentally not well. Generally speaking, I'm not saying everyone, yes? There's exception, no doubt. So Islam, when it came to preserve these five things, put a barriers. However, there is some people who benefit from this these vices. Who are they? The people in power. They do benefit from gambling, interest, even though they know it's bad for us. So what they do, they, because they're rich, they're making money from the suffering of the people, they use their wealth to make Islam look bad, even though Islam is good for us individually and collectively. And the question we ask ourselves, how man that existed, Prophet Muhammad, who came with Islam, how man that existed 1,400 years ago, was able to come with a perfect way of life. The five necessities about protecting our intellect, health and wealth and so on, you know, about worshiping the true God. And now, 
also I was going to mention to you, because we're talking about the government and power, uh, those who are in power, when Islam comes to preserve these five things, he brought barriers. In one of the break down those, bar the, those barriers, there's a punishment. Because we human beings, we don't think ahead. We always want something quick. Even though it's bad for us, but the creator of everything, he knows what is good for us in details, what is bad for us in details. So when you look at Islamic legislation and you compare it to human legislation, Islamic legislation, the example I give is like when you go to a doctor. You with me? You go to a doctor and you say, I have a pain. What doctor give you? Painkillers. What painkillers do doesn't not treat the root of the problem. Painkillers just manage the symptoms and cover up the pain. But Islamic legislation, you okay, yeah? All right. All right. Islamic legislation deal with the problem from the roots. That's why in Islam we have something called what evil leads to evil. You have to stop it. No say, yeah, I know it leads to evil, but keep doing it. Like a drink a little alcohol is okay now. It's gonna lead to greater evil. So how Prophet Muhammad came with is a perfect way of life. He couldn't read and write, but we have these politicians who studied in the best universities around the world, they cannot resolve the problems we are facing. Because Prophet Muhammad, the legislation that he came with, والسلام, the legislation of Islam came from the Almighty. That's why it's perfect for us. That's why even you agree with it. Because it makes sense. You understand? You go, that's what I'm saying. So how man couldn't read and write? He never went to universities. He's coming with this perfect way of life. That strengthen our belief there is a creator, you know? What have you said so far about these five universities, five things? It makes sense? No, I get it. Yeah. But it's just, I mean, it's hard. My sister's atheist and my mom's Christian. Okay. So they both have different opinions about me and stuff, and they both want me to believe two different things. Yeah. And obviously my sister believes in science more, like I was trying to tell you earlier. Yeah. That it's just, I don't know how to explain it. Like, I'm no, not I understand. Like, you're, you're like, like a, you know, but let me tell you something. My wife, she's a revert to Islam. My wife, she became Muslim when she was 14. She became Muslim before I met her, yes? And mashallah, my wife, she's well versed in science, yes? And uh, she became Muslim when she was 14. Her mother is atheist. Other part of her family Christians, yes? Her stepfather is atheist, okay? But alhamdulillah, she was smart enough to make a decision when she was 14. I don't, I'm not sure how old you are. When she was 14, to say, you know what? Islam makes sense to me. I'm not gonna follow my mother or my sister. That's why Allah in the Quran always address the intellect. That's why in Islam, anything that harms the intellect is forbidden because that's one of the tools that we utilize to reflect upon God's creation, likewise upon his revelation. So think about it, look at, you know, there, 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 there's a huge war against Islam. No doubt, in, in, in Australia, in America, in Britain, everywhere. Many articles have been written speaking bad way about Islam, in a negative way. But the fastest growing religion on the face of the earth, especially in the Western world, in Europe and America, is Islam. Even though there's many barriers by those who are in power, they have stronger uh, tools to try to stop, stop Islam, but they cannot stop it because Allah told us Allah will make Islam spread out even if a disbeliever dislike it. And Allah mentioned that 1,400 years ago. That's a prophecy that we can observe with our own eyes. You know, that's why, you know, people accept Islam in Britain, America, you know, a lot of people accept Islam. So I understand you saying about your family, about science, you know, yes, you study about the universe, but the, sometimes science has been used to manipulate us. Sometimes they tell you, are you aware of that? There is a documentary I will tell you to watch, called The Expelled Ones. Abbas, how many? It was done by a Jewish uh, journalist. Uh, I will tell you which one. So please, I will advise you to try to watch it. Why? He exposed how many universities, when they see scientists believe in God, they will start harassing them. And they always try to push scientists who do not believe in God. So clearly there is agenda. I will show you this one, yeah? And I, I really appreciate your time, you know? I'll show you one. I'll show you. <laughs> That's the one, look. So what, is this, is this what you want me to see? That's the, that's the commentary, yeah. About how, yeah, expelled ones. So it says expelled ones 
no intelligence allowed. He's a Jewish journalist, he's famous, I forgot his name, you know. And he goes to the top universities in America. And he speaks to some scientists who were sacked from their jobs, even they're good at it. Because in the articles they are speaking about this universe indicate there's a creator. They start harassing them. So talking about freedom, I agree. We have to give freedom, but there is restriction, no doubt about that. Because giving absolute freedom will make chaos, you know? So he starts exposing them that you claim that you follow science and approves, but when you have a scientist who are uh, uh, qualified and experts in their fields, you are rejecting them. As for my channel, that's my channel. Yeah, of course. Also, we have Instagram. So, uh, if you have Instagram, this is our Instagram page. Oh, you yeah. oh, you know, but you don't better than me, man. Okay. Do you have any question? I was just here to listen, maybe. No, no, no. <laughs> but I think about it, you know. Think, because yeah. one day we're going to die and we're going to live this life. Have you been to Algeria? Have you been to Morocco? Never. Imagine you're going to travel to Morocco, to Algeria. What do you have to do first before traveling? You have to study which currency they use. Is it a safe country? Is it a cold country? Okay? What language they speak? So likewise, you have to understand why we have to die. What is my purpose? Every part, every part of your body has a purpose. You know, what is my purpose? Ask questions. And I believe this question be answered in the holy book of the Muslim, the Quran. I mean, I don't have the Quran. I would have the, otherwise, I would give it to you. But if you can send us a message via our Instagram, I can send you a PDF to read. Okay? Thank you very much for listening. And sorry if I said something rude to you or something. You're sure? I'll take you yourself, yeah? All right, take care. Alhamdulillah, better than the other guy, Alhamdulillah. We'll lie, nice discussion. What happened? Okay, the adult is Islam, okay. Okay, I'll leave us. Thank you. Alhamdulillah. So, I'll tell you. لا لا هذاك مريض هذاك شي كاع هو هو هذاك هذاك كيما نقول هذاك يروح المغرب بالنسبه لي يرجموه ما شاء الله You got to Hajj. I've been told you cannot have debt when you go when you go on Hajj. You cannot have debt. When you go to Hajj, you cannot have debt. 